Welcome to Rapid Movie Recaps. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications. Show your support for our channel by checking out our merchandise below. In a thrilling baseball game, Gwen excitedly supports her brother Finney as he pitches. The opposing team's batter, Bruce, misses the ball twice but finally hits a home run on the third pitch, securing a win for his team. After the game, Bruce praises Finney's pitching skills, saying he's got an impressive arm. Sometime later, Bruce rides his bike, slowing down as he spots a mysterious black band. A few days pass, and Finney is having breakfast with his family. His father, Terence, complains about Finney's loud slurping. Gwen accidentally drops the lid of the breadkeeper and quickly apologizes for the noise. As the siblings head to school, they come across a missing person's flyer featuring Bruce, who hasn't been seen in days. Shortly after, they witness a confrontation between Robin and the school bully, Moose. Robin skillfully takes down Moose and lands several punches, earning cheers from the other students. Finney, however, pulls Gwen away from the scene. Gwen argues that Moose had it coming, as he is a notorious bully. She also admires Robin for being the toughest kid in school since the grabber allegedly took their previous bully, Vance. Finney is uncomfortable discussing the grabber, but Gwen reassures him that the rumor about the grabber kidnapping kids who say his name isn't true. In science class, Finney distracts himself with his rocket ship pen and steals glances at his crush, Donna. After class, sensing bullies watching him, Finney rushes to the restroom. Buzz, Matt, and Maddie follow him, but Robin intervenes, recounting how he defeated Moose and intimidating the bullies. Before they leave, Robin warns them to leave Finney alone. Once they're gone, Robin encourages Finney to stand up for himself. When Finney inquires about Robin's fight with Moose, Robin explains it was to make a point. Robin then asks for help with math, complaining about their fast-talking teacher, and Finney agrees. At the same time, Gwen is called to the principal's office to meet Detectives Wright and Miller. They question her about a conversation she had with Bruce's sister. Gwen admits to having a dream about Bruce being taken by a man with black balloons. Wright reveals that black balloons were found at the scene where Bruce and another kid were abducted, and they press her on where she heard this detail. Confronted, Gwen admits that her dreams occasionally come true. After school, Gwen stays at a friend's house. That evening, Finney finds their father Terrence passed out and cleans up after him. He then eats ice cream and watches scary movies until falling asleep. The next morning, Finney wakes to Gwen's screams as Terrence whips her with a belt, angry about being questioned by the police at work. Gwen denies fault and threatens to drop his liquor bottle if he hits her again. Terrence warns her of the consequences, but she drops it anyway, causing it to shatter. Terence strikes her again, and Gwen cries as he dismisses her dreams and likens her to her mother. Fearfully, Gwen agrees with him. Finney then joins his distraught sister to comfort her. Meanwhile, Robin heads to a store and spots a man emerging from a black van. That evening, news of Robin's disappearance spreads. Gwen comforts her brother Finney, who is worried about his friend. Finney asks if Gwen can use her dreams to find Robin, but she explains that she can't control them. Despite this, Gwen prays in her room, asking for a clue to locate Robin. When Terence turns on the hallway light, Gwen pretends to sleep. Before leaving, he tells her he loves her, and she reciprocates. Days later, with Robin absent, bullies attack Finney. Gwen rushes to his defense, hitting Maddie with a rock before fighting Buzz, who overpowers her. With Gwen defeated, Buzz and Matt resume beating Finney. In science class, students are asked to choose partners, leaving Finney alone until Donna volunteers to join him. After school, Gwen teases Finney about Donna before going to spend the night at a friend's house again. Later, Finney walks along a deserted path and notices a man stumbling out of a black van, dropping his groceries. Finney offers to help, and the man introduces himself as a magician. Spotting black balloons in the van, Finney watches as the man retrieves them but then uses them to trap him. Finney resists, stabbing the man's arm with his pen, but the man subdues him with a spray and drags him into the van. Upon regaining consciousness, Finney finds himself on a bare mattress in a nondescript room. The grabber complains about his injured arm, but promises not to hurt Finney further. A distant phone ringing interrupts them, and the grabber leaves, bowing to explain everything later. Once alone, Finney checks the locked door and explores the room, discovering a separate area with a toilet. Returning to the mattress, he spots a black phone on the wall, but it's disconnected. Terence soon calls Gwen at her friend's house, asking about Finney's whereabouts. Worry, Gwen rushes out, realizing her brother has been taken. The police are quickly alerted to his disappearance, and Gwen prays for her brother's safe return. Finney wakes up to a ringing phone, but the grabber informs him it doesn't work. The grabber promises to take Finney home soon, but he has to deal with something first. Finney, fearing he'll be caught, promises not to tell the police if he's released. 
The grabber laughs, saying it's not about the police. Finney suspects someone else is in the house and threatens to scream. The grabber claims that he won't hear Finney with the door shut, leaving Finney puzzled about who he is. After the grabber leaves, Finney screams, but the room is soundproof. He tries to reach a high window but fails. The phone rings and he answers to hear nothing. Later while asleep, he hears creaking from the phone and realizes the grabber is watching him. Finney asks for food, but the grabber declines, admitting he only wanted to look at him. Finney wakes up to the phone ringing again. He answers and a boy's voice addresses him by name. Frightened, Finney hangs up, but the phone rings once more. The voice tells him not to hang up, revealing that he's Bruce, who has forgotten his name after dying. Bruce explains that the phone rang for all of them, but only Finney heard it. The grabber also hears the phone but doesn't believe it. Bruce instructs Finney to find a loose tile and dig a tunnel through the dirt. Meanwhile, Wen dreams about Bruce's life and sees Finney screaming inside a house. She ventures out at night to find the house, while Finney locates the loose tile and begins digging. When tired, he flushes the dirt down the toilet and covers the hole with the carpet. The next day, the grabber brings Finney breakfast but forgets to lock the door. Just as Finney is about to leave, the phone rings and a new voice warns him it's a trap. Billy's ghost appears next to Finney, unseen, and cautions that the grabber is upstairs, ready to punish him for trying to escape. He reveals that they all suffered the same fate before ending the call. Despite this, Finney carefully ventures upstairs but senses the grabber waiting for him. He chooses to return downstairs and eat instead. Later, Billy calls again but insists he's no longer Billy. As the ghost becomes agitated, Finney notices his soda bottle shaking on its own. He then points out the crack in the wall, mentioning he pulled the cable loose from there. Finney asks what he should do with it, and the bottle indicates the window. Meanwhile, Gwen dreams about Billy delivering newspapers when the grabber kidnapped him. Finney finds the cable and uses a rolled carpet to loop it around the bars. He begins climbing to open the window, but the bars break, causing him to crash back onto the floor. That evening, Gwen talks to her father about her dreams. Terence explains that her mother also had prophetic dreams, but they led her to do terrible things, eventually taking her own life. Concerned for his daughter, he insists the dreams aren't real. However, Gwen believes her dreams can help find Finney, prompting Terence to help her search for the house and her visions. The police visit Max's home to ask about the missing boy. Max invites them in, revealing he's investigating the abductions too. He talks about the pattern of the kidnappings and theorizes the abductor has a house and garage to hide his activities. He points out a general area where the abductor might live. Detectives Miller and Wright aren't interested in question Max, who says he's new in town, staying at his brother's house. As they leave, Miller suggests Max clean up the drugs on the coffee table. Max snorts the powder, unaware that Finney is trapped beneath him. The grabber returns with food and asks Finney's name. He typically learns the boys' names from newspapers, but things aren't going smoothly this time. When Finney gives a fake name, the grabber drops the food and shows him a newspaper with his real name. The grabber claims he would release Finney before leaving the door unlocked again. Before Finney can open the door, the phone rings but no one speaks. Upstairs, the grabber struggles to stay awake, waiting for Finney. Instead, Finney gathers the spilled food to eat and then goes to sleep. He later wakes up to the sound of dripping and discovers a dead body hanging in midair, blood pooling on the floor. The body points to the phone, prompting Finney to answer it. A new voice warns Finney that the grabber hasn't slept, fearing his brother might discover his secret. Finney recognizes the voice as another victim, Griffin. Griffin regrets being invisible when alive and only becoming known after his death. Finney asks why the grabber hasn't killed him yet, and Griffin explains it's because he hasn't played the game, preventing the man from winning and moving on to the next stage. Griffin shares that the grabber has fallen asleep and is using an old bike lock for the storm door. Though he doesn't remember the combination, he carved it on a wall. Finney finds the numbers and quietly heads upstairs. He sees the grabber asleep in the kitchen, sneaks past him, and locates the lock. He successfully unlocks it, but a dog barks, alerting the grabber. Finney runs outside while the grabber pursues him in his van. The grabber tackles Finney and threatens to hurt him if he makes a sound. They wait silently until the neighbors turn off their porch lights, and then the grabber knocks Finney out and takes him back to the basement. The next day, Gwen wonders why she didn't dream the previous night, questioning her father's beliefs about her dreams. Finney wakes up to a ringing phone and hears a new voice, Vance, a former school bully. Vance's ghost warns Finney that today will be challenging. Meanwhile, Gwen dreams about Vance's arrest and overhears his conversation with Finney on the black phone. She sees the house number before waking up. Back in the basement, Vance tells Finney there's a storage room beyond a wall, but a freezer blocks it. He instructs Finney to break the wall, remove the panel to access the freezer, and then climb into the storage room. 
Finny thanks Vance, who angrily insists it's about revenge. Vance's anger causes a bottle to shatter near Finny. Following Vance's advice, Finny spends the day breaking the wall and finds the panel behind the freezer. He removes it, enters the freezer, but can't open the door since it's locked from outside. Exhausted, Finny breaks down until the phone rings. Robin is on the line, determined to help Finny avoid the same fate. Praising Finny as a fighter, Robin teaches him to throw a punch and instructs him to fill the receiver with dirt to use as a weapon. Robin reveals this is the last call, urging Finny to use their guidance to escape. They say their goodbyes before Finny hangs up. As Robin suggested, Finny fills the foam receiver with dirt and creates a tripwire using the cable. Meanwhile, Wen spots the ghosts of the grabber's victims while searching houses, causing her to fall off her bike. She realizes she's found the right house and calls the detectives. Wright, Miller, and Max head out, with Max noticing his brother's house is in the area he suspected the grabber lived. Finny hears creaking from the phone and sees the receiver moving. The lights turn on, and Finny grabs the receiver, ready to fight. Instead, Max enters, shocked to discover his brother is the grabber. Finny watches in horror as the grabber attacks Max with an axe. Detectives arrive, and Gwen directs them to the house. Inside, the grabber confronts Finny, blaming him for Max's death. After retreating his axe, the grabber calls his dog, which growls at Finny. The police break into the house but find it empty. The grabber sets his dog's leash near the door and swings the axe at Finny. The boy dodges and leaps toward the toilet. The grabber chases him, but Finny pulls the cable, causing the grabber to trip into the pit he dug. The grabber gets stuck, and Finny punches him with the phone. The man grabs Finny, putting him in a chokehold. Finny fights back, removing the grabber's mask, which causes him to panic. Finny then strangles him with a phone cord. The phone rings, and Finny puts the receiver to the grabber's ear. He hears his victims taunting him before Finny snaps his neck. Finny uses meat from the broken freezer to distract the dog and walks upstairs. An officer discovers a hidden basement door in the other house, revealing the grabber's burial site for victims. Finny exits the house, and Gwen rushes to hug him, followed by the police. Terence finds them and hugs his son, apologizing for his past behavior. The siblings reunite and find comfort in each other. Later, Wright reports the grabber owned both houses, using one to keep victims alive and the other to bury them. Days later, Finney returns to school and all the kids, even his former bullies, watch him in awe. In science class, he sits confidently next to Donna. This movie can be purchased at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more rapid movie recaps.